Well, here we go again. Another episode of Ask Jace. I'll tell you what, first of all, a big thank you to all the fans that have sent in the questions and that are watching Ask Jace segments all the time. It's, it's, it's out of control, literally out of control. Um, so, Jacob says, if you were driving from Brisbane to Uluru, okay, Uluru, Ayers Rock, the big red rock in the middle, over near Alice Springs, on a tight schedule, which way would you go and what would you stop to see slash do on the way? Okay, Jacob, tight schedule. How tight, mate? Depends. All right, so Brisbane to Uluru. Okay, so we head out to Woomba and away we go. We start cracking west. Out to Woomba, first stop, head out to Thargaminda. All right, go and have a look around those old west, you know, you know, out west out there. You're getting into the western country there. Um, and then cruise through to Inaminka. Go to Inaminka. And then that's pretty much on your way, and they call it the adventure way to Birdsville. Okay, Birdsville, that's where Big Red lives. Okay, that's not a big kangaroo, by the way. If you're not familiar with it, that's Big Red, the Big Red Sand Dune. Now, you can either go to Big Red have a crack up Big Red and then keep going. Popple's Corner all the way across to Mount Dare and that gets you across the Simpson Desert, okay? You're going to um, Mount Dare and then it's up the old Gan Line where they run the Fink Desert Race and that rolls you into Alice Springs. If you're not towing anything and you've got a long range tank under your truck, smash it, hit it. 1100 sand dunes, away you go. It'll be the trip of a lifetime. If you don't want to go across the desert then you've got to head up to the north, okay, towards Mount Isa, and then you can cut across, okay? Now, don't quote me on this one. I think there should be a couple of cuts across, or you might have to go up to Mount Isa and out to the three ways and down the Stewart Highway to Alice Springs. Alice Springs is going to be your jump-off point to Uluru. There's also um, Kings Canyon, I think it's called. Um, and a few other bits and pieces there. So that's pretty cool out there. So it's not just Uluru to see, but there's everything else around it. Okay, go out there. So if that helps, so maybe there's a long way and a short way. If you want to stay on the dirt roads in the bitumen, head up that way. If you want to go across the Simpson Desert for a real adventure, then Birdsville, crack straight across, then up. So Jacob, awesome question, mate. Hope that fills in the answers and the gaps on your next trip. I'm assuming it's Brisbane to Uluru. Have fun with your family, you and your family if you're going, or your mates. Okay, here we go. We got Peter. Peter, if you're watching, Peter S. Okay. Um, hi, what brand of shorts does Jace wear? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm actually wearing them at the moment. They are a quick dry work short with side pockets and some big pockets on the legs. And they are an FXD. Okay. I'm not sponsored by FXD, by the way. Um, you just want to know what shorts I was wearing. Um, and that's what I wear. So they're pretty cool, they're quick dry, they're quite durable. Um, the pair of shorts that I wear on the show, I'm wearing one pair of shorts for like nine weeks. So that means they're pretty good, eh? They usually stand up on themselves by the time I'm finished. All right, here we go. So we got another question here from Tane. And I hope I've uh, spelt, uh, pronounced that correctly. Tane, with an N-E. Uh, Tane G. How you going, Tane? Don't know, boy, girl, don't know. It's all good. Let's answer your question. Hey, just wondering, what exhaust do you guys have on the D-Max? Okay, there you go. Well, that's, that's a pretty good question. Okay, so the old D-Max, it's a diesel. A um, uh, little four-cylinder diesel. Uh, Torquet have developed a stainless steel exhaust system for it. Uh, don't quote me on this again, I think it's around the two and a half inch and it might roll out to a three inch. Now, you unbolt it at the back of the DPF, uh, diesel particle filter, unbolt it there and they bolt in their exhaust system to help sort of flow that last bit of, out past the DPF. Uh, stainless steel and um, yeah, pumps it out the side and away we go. So there you go. That's, uh, um, hopefully that answers your question there. Tame. I hope I got that, spell that, or pronounce that correctly. Uh, great question. Okay, next question. Hey Jace, the four wheel drive on my vehicle cuts out when it gets too hot. What options do you have to avoid it? Adrian, Adrian S. How you going Adrian? 
I'm not quite sure what you're on about there. The four-wheel drive of my vehicle cuts out when it gets too hot. Okay. Um, any vehicle when you're out in the sticks and you're up north and, and, and you're towing and stuff like that and it gets hot, that sucks. Trust me. Big time. I hate it. Can't stand it. Like, I can't stand watching that, that temperature gauge going like that. Okay. What do we do to combat that? If your vehicle is getting too hot and your four-wheel drive is cutting out, quite possibly it sounds like you've got a modern vehicle, okay, something that uses electronics and stuff like that. So from what I can gather, it sounds like that it might be going into what's called limp mode, okay? So the motor is getting too hot and then, of course, the computer says, hey, no more, no more right pedal for you, buddy. Um, we're going into limp mode, so it would probably shut down the four-wheel drive take it back to two-wheel drive or constant four-wheel drive, depending on the vehicle, and um, basically, yes, disengaging your four-wheel drive. So it takes the load off the front or takes the load off the engine. So I think that's maybe what's happening, Adam. Uh, sorry, Adrian. And, um, but here's the thing. I had a similar problem with my uh, 200 Land Cruiser while I was on holidays last year, and the temperature gauge went through the roof when I was on the beach and I was towing some heavy loads and I was working this truck hard for 20 odd kilometers in soft, really, really soft uh, sand. And I had a wind, the wind direction was coming from the southeast, so it's on, it was on my ass like that, which means I wasn't getting any wind coming in through the front. What did I do? Well, I, I glanced down and went, holy crap, the needle's up there. So I went, right, I just stopped and I let the engine cool down. I went, I double checked my tyre pressures to make sure they were as low as they could go. I actually dropped another three or four PSI out of them. And I think I got them down to like 12, 13 PSI in the front, 15 in the back because of the load I had. I dropped the air right out of the trailer tyres to help it, to help it, you know, sort of float on top and not sort of really labour that engine. If your car's overheating, I'd take it to a service dealer for starters and ask why, but I think that's why what's happening, it's going into limp mode. So hopefully, Adrian, Adrian S, that covers that question, because I wasn't quite sure what you're on about. But anyway, good question. Hopefully I've answered it. Now, that's all we've got time for this week on Ask Jace, and um, keep sending them in. Get on that laptop, get on your computer, get on your iPhone, and um, or get on your phone, and start punching in some questions, because I'm quite happy and sitting here waiting to answer all your questions.